just going to say two or three things, or, or maybe only two. Um, uh, last week was, um, what did I call it, viewpoint, and it was overhead. And, and everything, if you weren't here, um, we were working sort of bird's eye thing, and also there was this circle and square compositional thing to deal with the uh, uh, space. This today is, so some people have elected to do the over, the over, because this was what was left over. I, I bought too many things. <laughs> but, so, but you have four stations on the walls. The, this point of view is the frontal, or another way to think about it, in, so traditionally, is the landscape approach to still life. Uh, you're looking at it in a way which presents a, a certain, somewhat flattened perspective issue of um, foreground, middle ground, background. It, it, is, it, is, it is somewhat flattened, just the way our overview very definitely was flattened, or plain. Uh, but there's a little bit of play of space and air in it. So um, th there are a, little, a few other things to uh, pick up on that, um, including a certain kind of shadowing and a certain kind of modeling and maybe the ellipses a little like a, um, alternate ways as they go back. But it is still shallow space. But it is frontal. It's another way of thinking of uh, position because the other thing that I've done with all the wall pieces is I've emphasized the vertical and I've emphasized a, a congested that happens to all be on the left with the, the scar flowers and the leaves kind of congested on the left breathing into a, a more open space on the right. So those are good things to make you know your you're jumping off points, even if you jump off and away from them and don't go vertical and do a square or do whatever you want, but um, they're set up with that in mind. Um, and nothing else especially to say, except I did put this old thing, thing, and I did a file guide, some people have probably seen it. Um, oh, here's the original, this is the original, here's a copy. Um, of some of the four, four big issues that still life often brings up. Uh, and so I, and I started with a sort of minimal color. Color that, you know, that, again, a big focus, focus on what the color is. You'll find there's, a, again, a funky color theme in most of these. So a, a painting could be these grapes. A painting could be what I call theme narrative, where everything in it is, uh, works towards a common theme. In this case, it's sort of a feast, wine, debauchery, hangover, hangover, um, glasses tipped. Um, she thought I talked about my hangover, but I was talking about my handout earlier. <laughs> then the demuth, the, 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 the um, uh, which we talked about, it, and has has sort of gone into two or three of our uh, setups, with a working from the center out and using uh, folds, um, bends, whatever, the directional. And then shape, where possibly you take the, the objects and you, you figure out the denominator of what are these shapes, why are they similar, how can I use them, and you might get extremely abstract and start. You know, the pairs turn into one shape, Thanks very much for the color. So um, when you think about the still life setups that you see, um, trying to put little labels in the beginning it can be a good way to um, own them. So that's that. I put up again my grays, uh, gray mixes. Some people may not have been here when we thought about those before. And I love, I always love playing with those. And, um, here are my two new paintings. Cobalt turquoise, with who many people have, and the, uh, what's it called, uh, cobalt uh, violet. 